Today I'm doing the force table video and what I'm doing here is I've got three forces. I'm going to balance them by making sure that this ring is not touching the pin on either side. So I've already put weights on this force and this force and now I'm going to pull this and get an idea of where I need to move this. I need to obviously move this over a bit right here. Let's see. Right there looks like a good orientation for it. So that's my angle. Uh, maybe a little bit like that. I'm going to lock in my angle. And then I'm going to put some weights on here. And I'll get my, my forces balanced so that this, this ring is not pulling against the pin in any manner. Now you can see that the ring is suspended and it's not pulling on the pin in any manner. Now it's time to interpret the data. Okay, so I have three forces. One angle is at 220. A second angle is at 10. And the third is around 80. Method and the component method. Here's our data on the left. I have applied three forces, one at zero degrees. I've uh, added 200 grams. The second at 70 degrees, where I added 170 grams. And the third at 210 degrees, where I've added 300 grams. I've used a scale of 10 grams equals one centimeter. On the right is my... Here is the graphical method diagram. As you can see, my first vector is at zero degrees, it's 20 centimeters. The second vector is at 70 degrees, it's 17 centimeters. The third vector at 120 degrees is 30 centimeters. The portion between the end of the third vector and the beginning of the first vector is the vector I am interested in. That is our resultant vector. Here you see a graphical representation of our three vectors. You have the first vector, 20 centimeters at zero degrees. Our second vector, 17 centimeters at 70 degrees. And our third vector, 30 centimeters at 120 degrees. What we are interested in is in blue the difference between all these. I've measured that and that would be four centimeters. The angle is 50 degrees. Converting that back into our scale, four centimeters equals 40 grams. So our resultant vector will be 40 grams at 50 degrees. For method two, we will analyze the components of the three forces. On the left, you have the data. On the right, is an example of how to solve for the components of each force. For the x, you have the magnitude times the cosine of the angle. For the y component, you have the magnitude times the sine of the angle. I have done an example for you on the bottom. I chose the third vector because it has it lies in the third quadrant and both the sine and the cosine will have negative values. It's very important to make sure you know where your vector lies so you can get the signs correct. Now we will interpret the data. On the left you will see that I have listed the three X and Y components in columns. On the bottom is their total. So I've added up each one and got a total for the X and Y components. These are Cartesian coordinates. We will need to convert into polar coordinates. To get the magnitude of the polar coordinate, you will take the square root of the sum of the squares of the Cartesian coordinates. I have done so, and I have gotten a magnitude of 9.83. And recall the unit here would be grams. To get the angle, I have taken the tangent inverse of the y component 
divided by the x component. I have done so and gotten an angle of negative 80.2 degrees. Here are your three data points. At zero degrees, we've applied 200 grams. At 81 degrees, we've applied 220 grams. And finally, at 222 degrees, we've applied 320 grams.